Welcome to the Saul's Newsstand News Review for September 14, 2018. This update is brought to you by the 60 Plus Association and the American Association of Senior Citizens. For more information, visit 60plus.org. If you want to go in-depth with the articles discussed in this video, there are links in the description below. John C. Goodman, a contributor for Forbes magazine, has written a two-part article entitled, What You Need to Know About Medicare for All. Goodman makes 10 different points regarding the idea of Medicare for All. The first point that Goodman makes is the fact that Medicare is not really government insurance. He writes, almost everybody on the political left thinks that Medicare is a government plan, one that is completely different from private insurance. Yet that view is wrong. Although Medicare is largely funded with tax dollars, it has never been a strictly government program. Medicare's original benefit package copied a standard Blue Cross plan that was common back in 1965. And Medicare has always been privately administered, in many places by Blue Cross itself. That's the same Blue Cross that administers private insurance sold to non-seniors. Another point Goodman makes is the fact that Medicare for All would be costly. He states, Medicare for All sounds attractive to some people because it suggests that you are going to get something for nothing. But when pressed, even Bernie Sanders admits there is no such thing as a free lunch. A study from the Mercatus Center estimates that Medicare for All would cost $32.6 trillion over the next 10 years. Other studies have been in the same ballpark, and they imply that we would need a 25% payroll tax. And that assumes that doctors and hospitals provide the same amount of care they provide today, even though they would be paid Medicare rates, which are about 40% below what private insurance has been paying. Without those cuts in provider payments, the needed payroll tax would be closer to 30%. You can find links to parts 1 and 2 of the article in the description below. The Washington Times reports that Newt Gingrich and Republicans are proposing a new contract with America ahead of the midterm elections. The article says, Republicans have poll tested a contract with America-style agenda to carry into the fall elections as they ponder whether they need to give voters a bolder plan for what they will do if they keep control of Congress. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, author of the 1994 contract that powered Republicans to their first House majority in decades, has been making the case for nationalizing the campaign. It's not clear what Republicans would write into a contract should they go that route. Mr. Gingrich said it would take a few weeks for something to gel. Pollster John McLaughlin in a poll last month tested whether voters would respond to a Trump-backed plan for term limits on Congress, paid parental leave, making the 2017 tax cuts permanent, and workfare, or requiring able-bodied people receiving government benefits to prove they are attempted to find jobs rather than staying on the public dole for prolonged periods. The platform tested surprisingly well with 50% saying they would be more likely to back Republicans who embraced that plan. That included 45% of independents, compared with 31% who said that they would be less likely to get behind a Republican promoting that agenda. Mr. Gingrich, though, cautioned against drawing too many similarities between the Republicans' task this year and what he accomplished in 1994. And finally, the New York Times reports President Trump honors heroes of Flight 93 on September 11th anniversary. The President paid tribute on Tuesday to the airline passengers and crew members who stormed the cockpit of a hijacked plane and thwarted terrorists in the skies over Pennsylvania on September 11, 2001, vowing to follow their example by standing up to evil in the world. In his first trip to Shanksville, Pennsylvania as President, Mr. Trump led a ceremony marking the 17th anniversary of the terrorist attacks by honoring the heroes who brought down United Airlines Flight 93 into an unpopulated field rather than allow it to be used as a weapon against the nation's capital. During a televised address at the Flight 93 National Memorial at the site of the crash, which killed 40 passengers and crew members, President Trump said, 17 years ago, 40 incredible men and women showed the whole world that no force on earth will ever conquer the American spirit. We treasure their memory. We cherish their legacy. 
and we ask God to forever bless the immortal heroes of Flight 93. And that concludes your Saul's Newsstand News Review for September 14th, 2018. For more political news faster, visit saulsnews.com.